What's this? Skull playing a mobile game? What does the world even come to? Well, generally I don't care for mobile gaming, but I got a sponsorship offer for Flippy Knife and decided to try it out to have a clue of what I'm talking about. And I have to say, it's really well done. A good example of simplistic but enjoyable gameplay. Looks nice too. If you don't have much time, it's a great casual game to relax with for a bit. Just like real life knife throwing, there is something satisfying about making the blade stick. It's free, but doesn't constantly interrupt you with ads. You can watch ads for extra gold, but you don't have to. Although I'm not exactly a fan of microtransactions, you can unlock stuff by playing and don't have to spend money on it. There are a lot of knives, axes, swords, and other items in the game. Some based on real designs, some from games and movies, and some crazy fantasy stuff. There are six different modes, and some are very challenging. If it can keep even a grumpy mobile gaming hater like myself entertained for a time, you might want to give it a try. The link is in the video description down below. Check it out. Okay folks, let's take a look at a curiosity. The Camillus M12. Now this would have made it into my Weirdest Knife series, if not for the fact that it's not really a knife. I mean, it's a bayonet. And some bayonets can be knives and can be used as such, but some really aren't. And this is the latter category. And you can see this is pretty strange. It's tri-edged and doesn't look a whole lot like a standard knife or any knife, really. So I got this on Amazon. It caught my eye because of how strange it is and... I just was curious and wanted to try it out, like, does this actually make sense, does this work? And short answer is yes. If you don't want to watch the entire video, it's just short answer, yes, it works. And if you want it, there's a link down below. Now the longer answer. So, this thing is made of well, stainless steel, it says on Camillus' website. It doesn't say what kind of steel there. However, on Amazon it says 420. You know, 420 is pretty cheap steel, but in this case, it's not really a problem. It says Rockwell Hardness is 52, and again, makes sense for what it is, because this is not a tool that you would use a whole lot. This is something that you would have with you when going hunting, for example, or for survival, military use, I don't see it. I mean, soldiers get certain standardized equipment issued and I would be highly surprised if anybody actually carried this. Um, it is really more of a, of a survival item because I mean, this is universal and it can fit on most rifles. Uh, I tried it with a brown bess that I have, which is kind of funny. And yeah, it does fit. I mean, the, the bayonet lug does go into the slot and that secures it a little bit. And then if you were to wrap it with the paracord that it comes with, then yeah, you would have a functional bayonet. And it could also be attached to a variety of other rifles. Uh, it wouldn't be as secure as a dedicated bayonet that is designed for use with a particular rifle that has the right kind of bayonet lug and all that, but it's a pretty solid workaround in that way. Uh, the other thing that I found this really useful for is throwing, and uh, I'm just going to let you watch the test footage first, and then I'll be back. This handle shape really lends itself to no spin throws because of the unique cross section here. You've got kind of a channel in here that the finger can ride in so you can push it this way. I'm not very good at it because I haven't have barely practiced it, but it definitely feels good for that. Okay, so I've just unraveled the paracord. It looks like about three and a half meters. And it should be a little better for throwing now.
Yeah, throws quite nicely. All right, so I just made a primitive short spear. Could have made it look much nicer, but didn't want to spend too much time on it right now. So, see how it goes. Seems to work. So, is it a somewhat gimmicky design? Yes. Uh, does it have the tactical couch potato prepper feel to it? Yeah, certainly. Is it a good design? Yeah, it is. It works. Uh, you can definitely lash it to just about any stick and get a functional spear. You could attach it to a rifle. You can throw it very well. And it does a job. Now, if I was to review this as a knife, yeah, that wouldn't be so good. Can't really do anything with it except scrape. A lot of survival knives, I mean, just about any, really can be lashed to a stick. Uh, they're not going to fit as nicely, because this here, with, with this angle, the stick actually fits in that in this kind of channel and makes it a bit more secure uh, but yeah as I said you can still do that with another any other kind of knife survival knife etc and that knife would also have other purposes then like batoning carving and all kinds of cutting tasks and so on and so forth this can do that in case you're wondering if batoning works with this well only if the piece of wood that you're batoning fits through the opening here, otherwise you know. These pieces are pretty thick and rather narrow, so you can't really get a very acute edge on it. So even if you were to try to sharpen this, you wouldn't get it terribly sharp. So it doesn't fulfill the role of a knife. Now it's not claiming to be a knife either. I mean, as I said, there are bayonets with no edge at all. There is the, the sort of screwdriver design. There are spike bayonets and all of that. So this is really for martial application mainly. And for that, yes, I can very much see this design work. I mean, just look at how much it tapers, how wide it gets here. That would be one hell of a wound. If that gets in all the way, this would spread the wound apart. This would do massive, massive damage, you know, be it as in, in kind of a dagger thrust or with a spear thrust or thrown. So as gimmicky as the design may seem, it does what it's supposed to. I can't really fault it for that. As a bayonet, yeah, no problem. I don't have a problem with the choice of steel either for that purpose. Because, I mean, this point is really, really thick. And good luck damaging that, really. So there is some minor edge damage. I mean, if, if you even want to call that an edge, but it's really minor. You can beat this thing up. It's a solid piece of steel and there's nothing fragile about it whatsoever. So you can abuse this thing. You can throw it, you can, yeah, whatever. And it, it'll be fine. The blade or blades are titanium bonded, which means there is a coating of titanium and chromium nitride, which penetrates the steel, which gives it resistance to corrosion and adhesive, and supposedly makes the steel harder, which increases the edge retention. Isn't really a factor here because it doesn't have sharp edges to begin with. But I was impressed by the durability of the black coating. Most black finishes on other knives that I've tested, especially when doing these throwing tests at the beach, have rubbed off far more quickly. 
the sheath that it comes with also works. It's got the triangular shape and yeah, it holds on to it, like even without closing the straps. And yeah, it does what it's, what it's supposed to. It also comes with a paracord. I don't know where I put it, but it came with it. And uh, of course, paracord in a survival situation is also good. Really, the only problem is that it does not double as a knife. In a survival situation, you want to have as few tools as necessary. If you can get away with just one knife that can be used as a spear, it's better than having to, to carry a knife and this. But, you know, it's still cool. Like, as a collector's item, this is awesome. This is pretty cool. Now, the price goes for $30, $40 around, which, you know arguably is a bit much for what it is like, it's not outrageous in my opinion but it could maybe be a little cheaper but otherwise yeah it's pretty cool so i suggest checking it out link will be down below and uh, hope you like the review thanks for watching and have a good one folks